Job chapter 7. Continue with Job speaking. As there not is there not an appointed time to man upon the earth? I believe God has a a timetable for all men. Uh, there's a time to be born, and there's a time to die. I also believe in Scripture, which we're not studying tonight, that you can early you can move that date up earlier by doing sin. And imagine if you do something in your life where smoking, drinking, or anything like that, you cause yourself to die earlier than the Lord wants you to die. Well, guess what you're going to give account for? All those days that you didn't live. That's another story. Story. Are not his days also like the days of a hireling? Hireling is, is somebody who's hired to do a job. Uh, Hebrews 9.27 and Romans 6.23. Acts 17.26 and 31 are... are uh, verses you can look up. As a servant earnestly desires the shadow. Now you say, what on earth is that? You don't know what that is? You, you do it at least once a week if you're at work. You're looking at the clock. Oh, if I can get out of here. Oh, one more hour. 30 minutes. 16 minutes. That shadow is, is a clock or a sundial. So a servant earnestly desiring the shadow, he's waiting for that shadow to show, hey, it's time for me to go home. As a hireling, someone who's hired, looketh for the reward of his work, a paycheck. So Job is saying, listen, I'm looking for death as much as a guy who wants to get out of work or as much as a guy who wants to get his paycheck. By the way, in the Bible, you didn't work a week and got a paycheck. You worked that day, and at the end of the day, according to Jesus, you were paid. I mean, you may work 40 hours, go to the go to the guy, get your check, and find out the company can't afford you. That's happened before. So I am made to possess months of vanity, emptiness, fruitfulness. He doesn't have nothing no more. But we Christians have, still have the Lord. Jesus said, I'll never forsake thee or leave thee. So we may lose everything, but we still got the Lord. Job don't have that. And wearisome nights are appointed unto me. Imagine Job just laying on his bed, thinking of his family, thinking of everything. He's going to toss and turn. He's got these, he's got these sores all over him. When I lie down, I say, when shall I arise? When's morning coming? I don't like this night. I'm not doing too good. And the night be gone, I am full of tossings to and fro unto the dawning of day. All he's doing is rolling and rolling and rolling. He's not sleeping. It's a long, long night. Have you ever had a night that you can't sleep? You're just laying there. You're trying everything you can. You you've counted enough sheep to you know all the, there's not even enough sheep in the world for the count than what you did. And you look over at the alarm clock and it's only 1 a.m. And you went to bed at 12:30. It's going to be a long night. All right, now verse five. We're going to see how bad Job was. Uh, we saw it was just boils. My flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. Where did dust come from? He's shaking it on his head. Job's got worms crawling over him. They're open sores. My skin is broken. So it's not just a bubble. It's oozing. It's goozing. It's got worms in it. Pictures a man that's, that's dead and buried. 
And that's what Job wants. But his flesh is alive. And it's become loathsome. Now, if you were to check diseases, Guinea worm disease is a possibility what he has. And it's actually worms that do get in the skin with boils and gooeyness. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. Now, I don't know what a weaver's shuttle is. I've seen the workings of a, of a spinning wheel, and a spinning wheel goes quick. It's not something that's slow. And life is quick. Now that I reach over that, that I don't know where the, you know, over the hill is. I don't know if I'm top of the hill or rolling myself on the way down. But there's a point in life where you get, it's like, where did it go? We're at the end of another month. Before you know it, it's going to be a new year. And are spent without hope. A Christian cannot say that. For our hope is the blessed hope, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to set our eyes upon him and look for him to call us by the rapture or even by death. But we don't hurry our death. Or remember that my life is wind. Well, what is wind? It's gone. That's it. You know, if you're out there working and it's hot and all that, and a breeze comes along, cool, boom, it's gone. My eyes shall no more see good. Now, for an Old Testament saint in Job's time, he can say that. He cannot say absent from the body and present with the Lord. He can say, if he dies right, absent from the body in Abraham's bosom. And Samuel tells us that when he was in Abraham's bosom, he slept. It looks like only Abraham is awake. And carrying on conversation with people in hell. I don't think Lazarus in... I, no, here I go, putting Lazarus in hell again. That guy going to smack me when I get to heaven? What was I going to say? Oh, the rich man. You know, I don't think the rich man and Abraham's conversation was just one conversation just happened in time. I think there's a lot of people in hell when they see their loved ones over there on Abraham's but I think they say the same thing that that rich man says. I think Abraham was kept, you know, you don't have to believe that. I think Abraham was kept busy. Those guys shouting across. I mean, you're in hell. There's only one thing you want is out. And they're talking. And they're screaming. And Abraham can hear it. Imagine one of those Pharisees that John the Baptist says, you know, don't say you have Abraham because I'm able to raise up these stones. Imagine one of those Pharisees had died and gone to hell that time. And, Abraham, I was one of you. And then he carried the conversation. The eye of him that has seen me shall see me no more. True. Unless they put you in a glass casket, you're not going to see the body anymore. As this life on, on, on this planet. For the born again Christian, do we see our loved ones when, when we die to be absent from the body and present with the Lord? I'm going to give you the answer. I do not know. I don't know. And when we do be absent from the body and from the Lord and outside the rapture, it's just our souls. It's not the body. But your soul is your body. Because that lost soul, the rich man that went in hell, had eyes, had tongue, had fingers. So I don't know. But when someone presently dies on the earth, no, you're not going to see them again. In the resurrection, you will. At the rapture, you, you if the person is saved and you're saved you'll see them if not you're going to see them at the great white throne judgment thy eyes are upon me his friends and I am not I am not what 
his life. What is his life now? Not nothing. As the cloud is consumed, you ever watch a cloud and then boom, is this gone? And vanishes away. You know, if you see a cloud in the sky, hey, look, it looks like an elephant. Well, it's not going to be there two hours later, usually. Usually a lot of those clouds, you look up in the sky, they're as, going, as quick as going as they were to be seen. So he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. Wrong. Now later on, we're going to see that Job doesn't really believe this. Job later on believes in a resurrection. But Eliphaz has got him so mad, so angry, he's not even talking straight. Careful what you say. He shall return no more to his house. True. If he do, he's a spook. <laughs> Haunted house. <laughs> you believe in, do I believe in ghosts and stuff like that? Yeah. Have I ever seen anything? No. Have I ever had anything supernatural happen to me? Yes. Neither shall his place know him anymore. I mean, you're not going to be there no more once you die. It'll be your wife's name, your children's name, or, you know, the house is sold someone else's name. And, and man despised the Bible. Back in Connecticut, where we live, you know, when you go to the old areas of Mystic and all that, they got a plaque on the house that this was you know, somebody's house, Captain somebody's house. Well, that's a lie. Because now it belongs to the homeowner. That guy has died and long gone on. It may have been his house at one time. Therefore, I will not refrain my mouth. <laughs> It looks like right now they're like trying to shut him up. <laughs> Come on, Joe, shut up. Be, be good. Come on. No! I am not going to shut up. I am not going to refrain my mouth. I will speak in anguish of my spirit. Sit down and listen. You talked. You won't let me interrupt. Now, just sit there and listen to me, because I'm angry. That's what's going on. This ain't no how do you do a little talk here. You don't think about that. Like I said, I read the Bible the way the Bible is. And there is times when, when, when he's got to scrape himself, and you know, oh, you got to think about how he's speaking. He's mad at these guys. He's got these swords. He's cleaning his sword. He looks over. He sees the great. I mean, this ain't no howdy do. Do, 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 do. See, we forget to read the Bible the way the Bible is. You know, Jesus on the cross said, Lama, Lama, Savakti. He said that in pain. He said that trying to grasp air. He said that with his body hanging there and the muscles ripping and he's got his back torn open. And no preacher in this century could even describe the voice of our Savior on how bad he was tortured. And to say, Eli, Eli, Lama Savetina. Say it with a lot of pain. Imagine trying to say that, trying to reference what Job's going through. Imagine Jesus Christ saying that, and you got nails in both your hands, you got nails in both your feet, and you're hanging there and you're suffocating because your body's fluids are are, are filling up. Your lungs are being com uh, consumed by your own body. 
Every breath you take, the next one's harder. And then he had time to speak to the dying thief. And today in paradise, no. Paradise. I can't even do it. For God so loved the world that in his last breath he prays to the Father, outlaws his Father, forgive them. And you can't even do the voice. And this is Job. He's in so much pain. Oh, I lost my spot. Eleven. All right, chapter six. Eleven. Therefore, I will refrain my mouth. I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. You know what? When you got somebody who's in pain and suffering and going through troubles in their life, let them speak. Let them get it all out. And don't care what they say. Don't. Listen. Let them speak. When you're witnessing to somebody and they finally receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and they get down and say, would you like to pray? Yeah, I'd like to pray. And they throw out every four-letter word. Don't go. They don't know any better. Just pat the guy in the bag say, that was good. Did you really mean it? Yeah, I really meant it. You're saved. Oh, he said all of it. No. No. Let him speak. Am I a sea or a whale that thou settest a watch over me? Well, if you're on the boat and you see a whale, you gotta keep a, you gotta keep your eye on that whale. You don't want to meet the whale unless you're a whaler. You gotta keep a constant eye because you don't know what that whale is going to do. And he's saying, "Listen, you guys just gonna just watch me just." To see what I'm going to do? Am I your entertainment? People pay to go out in a boat and watch whales as entertainment. So whale watching is in the Bible. When I say my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaint. He wants rest. He needs rest. He's been on the ground for seven days and seven nights, as far as we know. And what it looks like, it didn't, looks like he has not slept. You know, if I was these three friends, I'd tell you what I'd do. And, and listen, they didn't have pills like we have today, but they had uh, herbs and stuff like that. There were stuff they can go get that they could have gave Job that would have knocked him out and put him to sleep. That would have been a help to Job. You mean drug them? Yeah, let them get some sleep. Let them get some rest. So somebody who, in this kind of thing like this, with less words, maybe you need to find a, hey, you know what? You just need to go to sleep and just rest. Then thou scarest me with dreams. Now he's turned to God. Because men can't give you, well, they, they can give you dreams, but God gives you dreams. Man can cause dreams. And terrify me through visions. There's your nightmares. What, what's he going to, what's his scary dreams? What is nightmares? What just happened to him in chapter 1 and chapter 2? Maybe, maybe his sin, maybe God's revealing to him his self-righteousness and he doesn't want to face it. Maybe he always had nightmares and dreams. Well, I don't know. I don't know who Job is. But he mentions nightmares and, and dreams. 
so that my soul chooses strangling and death rather than my life. He's so afraid of going to sleep and these dreams and all that. He wants to die. And every point we've seen from chapter 3 and, ch and chapter uh, 6 and 7, he wants death. What do you do as a companion instead of shutting, instead of opening up your big mouth? Prevent him at all costs from going ahead and killing himself. You say, will they do it? Don't make you do it. He's angry at Eliphaz what he said. I loathe it. That's extreme hate. I would not live all way. Let me alone. What's that mean? I mean, no, I mean, read about, do you think that maybe they're trying to restrain him? Let me alone. Come on, Joe. Let me alone. So you're going to have people who are in distress. They're going to say, let me alone. The Bible tells you that. Pain and anguish and sorrow. For my days are vanity. Well, not really. I mean, yeah, you lost everything. Yeah, you lost your children. But, I mean, there's still life. What is man? That thou shouldest magnify him. Now, he's going back to God and saying, you know what? Look at all the stuff I had, God. Look who I was. He's verged again on that self-righteous. Lord, you magnified me. Why? Why did you Why did you give me all those animals? Why did you give me all those children? Why did you give me everything you got? And now I sit here with these idiots in pain and sorrow. Why? He's searching God. You should never question God. Now if you want to know. Not questioning God as far as, you no, know, God, who do you think you are? It's God, what am I to learn from this experience? Is it correcting? Are you correcting me, God? What lesson do I need? What am I doing wrong? God, am I doing right and Satan's angry with me and you comfort me until it's done? Or is this just an object of blessing in life for something? God may be putting you through something right now. And it's all because, not because you sin, not because he's correct you, not because Satan's angry with you. He might be putting you through something right now because you may be dealing with people or a person later on down the road. And you'll be able to walk in their footsteps, but not their shoes. See, imagine if a man will go up to a woman and tell the woman how hard it is to have a baby. No. Sorry. Can't. And that thou should have set thy heart upon him. Well, him is really talking about Job himself. God, you set your heart upon him. He's finally calming down, finally realizing, you know what, God? There's some kind of reason why. And that thou shouldest visit him every morning and try him every moment. Moment. As Job is settling down, he's like, God, you're in charge of all this. What on earth just happened? 
Joe, you can't question God. Why not? I mean, visit every morning. I mean, it looks like Job may have prayed every morning, may have talked with God. I mean, he didn't have a Bible to read. How long will thou not depart from me? Okay, he's talking to God. Now he's saying, God, he departed from me. And you know what? It looks like God has departed from me. Now, when you get a Christian like this and they calm down, where would you run to to comfort them? Do you know where? It says, I will never forsake thee or, or, or leave thee when they calm down. Nor let me alone till I swaddle down my own spittle. Let me saw my own spit, all right? It must be hard for him. Swallowing your spit is easy. Maybe not for him. I have sinned. Amen. Glory to God. Job say, say this prayer, Job. All right, you're saved. No, 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 no. Pharaoh said, I have sinned. Saul said, I have sinned. And you're going to find them in hell. And there are too many Christians, I'm sorry to say today, this generation, they have said, I have sinned. And they're going to stand before God. And Jesus Christ is going to tell them to go in hell. But did it not, did it not, depart from me. And that's a wicked thing, whoever led that person to do that. Now, Job is on the road. Uh, I have sinned. I have I haven't talked to many people on the street ministry, but I have gotten people to say, you know what, I'm a sinner. We had one guy come up there, yeah, I'm a sinner, but I enjoy, I enjoy the drugs. Well, we ain't going to go nowhere with this one. Don't bow your head and say salvation. Job is like, I have sinned. Maybe that will get rid of all this trouble. Maybe he believes in the easy believism. See, some people confess just so they can get out of the trouble. There's a plea in the U.S. law court that for some charges, if you say you're guilty, we can get you on a lighter sentence. Don't be fooled always by I have sinned. Especially no one's been talking to him about sin. Now Eliphaz threw some things into his life, and he's 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 on the road to recovery, but he ain't there yet. What shall I do unto thee? Now we're on the road. Now he's saying, "Listen, I have sinned. Okay, what do I need to do to get right?" And the next friend that comes up ain't going to show him the way at all. <laughs> and then the next friend that speaks won't show him. He won't learn the way to get right into Elihu and Jehovah speaks. These three dogmatic, dogmatic men are going to speak and they don't give Job no answer. And we are worse in this generation. So think when you're dealing with somebody and they say, I have said, all right, I can get him saved. No, that guy's been through so many kind of churches, so many kind of teachers, so many kind of TV evangelism, so many times a radio ministry, that he doesn't even know what sin is. I had a guy tell me, with sin, oh, I'm not a sinner. I said, you ever steal anything? No, and I said, you ever steal a paper? Well, yeah, but I'm not a sinner. O thou preserveth, preserver of men, speaking to God, God will preserve you, whether in hell or heaven. You will keep your soul. God will keep your soul. 
Some people in, in the gloriousness of, of, of mercy and grace, and some people he's got to keep in the fire. Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee? Well, Satan really did. It was Satan's fault, to be honest. But God's using it for a correction. So that I am a burden to myself. I got to take care of myself. Why doest or dost thou not pardon my transgression? Because you have not really confessed it, Job. You have not nailed it down to the wall. You just said that general sin. Listen, I'm going to tell you something right now. Even as a born again believer, Say, well, Lord God, put my sins under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and for Jesus' sake, no, no, no. That don't work. That don't work. Lord, I lied today. I lied to this person. Lord, um, I'm not sure. Maybe I had told any of the lies that I don't know. I'll tell you what most Christians are afraid to pray. I, God answers it. I know he does. He know, I know personal much. Say to the Lord, be honest. Say, Lord, are there any sins today that are unconfessed in my life? I don't mean just today. I mean my entire life. Are there any sins since I've been saved that you and I are not right about? And you, you wait about five minutes. It don't even take that long sometimes. And you'll be laying there if you're not distracted by anything. Do it when you when you can't sleep. You can't sleep. Say, Lord, how's our fellowship? Too many Christians are afraid to say that because they know God will answer them. And then you'll be held accountable. Well, I'll tell you what, your fellowship's broken. You won't tell people about Jesus. Oh, oh I'm not going to ask God no more. Why dost thou not pardon my transgression? Confess it. First John 1 9. And take away my iniquity. Confess it. Name it. And for now shall I keep now shall now I sleep in the dust, death, and thou shalt seek me in the morning. But I shall not be there. I shall not be. That's weird. I don't know how he's saying that to God. Was he, I don't know if he's trying to say, God, if I, if I drop dead, you're going to come looking for me morning in prayer. Because he looks like he's talking about prayer in the morning, talking to God in the morning. It was in the, it was in the morning that the, the manna was searched and sought. I don't know if he's trying to say to God, well, God, if I drop dead, you're going to come in my, my room where I pray in the morning, and I'm not going to be here. Like God's going, where's Job? Where, where would he get that idea from? Come on, it's in the Bible. What story would have Job heard through his families, through tra traditions that make Job say a statement like that? Now, he didn't have a Bible, but he knew the stories. I'll tell you where he got that from. Adam, where art thou? Where art thou, Adam? That's where he got it from. But God wasn't like, Adam, gee, we're, I lost Adam. That, no, God, want, God wanted Adam to confess, to come up and say, Hey, God, guess what? What? I took that tree. Adam didn't do that, though. He, he beat it around the bush. <laughs> they moved from the tree to the bush. Then they played the tag game. It was her fault. Job is saying he wants God to come looking for him. According to Genesis chapter 3. God come looking for me. I've sinned. And we'll close there.